Welcome back to Spitball and Cards. In today's video, we'll be talking about breakout players on every team in Major League Baseball. So we will be talking about your team at least for five to 10 seconds or longer. And on top of that, we're also going to be discussing other players that we might be buying and looking at and what we think of each division. So let's talk about who's here. My name is Scott. We have Ty, Chris, and Phil. Welcome, everybody. Good to have you. Thank you for joining. One thing I'll note is our goal in this particular episode, it can get very long-winded. So we have a goose quack. If you hear that goose quack, that means someone spoke about their division for more than a minute and 30 seconds. So let's just jump into this. Ty, you go first. What's your division and who are you buying? Cool. I think that's a duck, by the way. Uh, it says <laughs> goose from StreamYard. So I don't know. That's weird. All right. I, I'm I starting like with a, like, the time's already started. Get it going. I know. I'm losing time. Uh, so I'm starting with I'm starting us off with the AL Central. So I'm going to go through the teams. And I'm starting with the Twins, and if I'm looking at one player on the Twins, it's got to be Royce Lewis. His production last year can't be ignored, completely insane. Uh, it's a question of health. He had 15 home runs in 58 games, a 150 OPS plus. He had six stolen bases, hit 309. Please stay healthy, Royce Lewis. Tigers, my Tigers. There's a few guys I could go with. I'm going to go Riley Green. It's kind of a put up or shut up a year, in my opinion, for a lot of the Tigers prospects who have been hyped over the years. And I would say none more than Riley Green other than maybe Torkelson. Green had a better first half of the year than he did post-All-Star break last year. Torkelson was the opposite. I'm going to say I'm watching both of them. Uh, for the Guardians, it's Andres Jimenez. Uh, I hope he has a bounce back here, even though I'm not a Guardians fan. He was MVP six two years ago when he hit 297, and then he dropped down to 251 last year. Uh, but he does have back-to-back -back gold gloves. Obviously, gets a good D-War bump. Uh, White Sox. It's got to be Luis Robert, no doubt. Um, I think he needs to have another great season. He had a good season last year, or I just think his cards could be toast. I think they could be tank candidates this year uh, if he doesn't play well. And then for the Royals, an obvious answer would be Bobby Wood Jr., but I'm actually going to go Vinny Pasquantino, who was kind of a fantasy darling last year, got injured, and his rookie cards are pretty much dirt cheap right now. There's some new metric. I don't remember the name of it, but they said it's, you know, he's really good at, so I'm putting my stock into Vinny P. That was a minute and 28 seconds. I wanted the goose quack to be so bad. I, I wanted to do it. Did, did I miss anybody? Anybody else that stands out to you? Teapot, I like the Tigers too. Uh, I was really interested. In this. I know you're a Tigers fan. I was very interested who you would pick. The Tigers have a lot of really intriguing players. Yeah. Scooble right now, Tariq Scooble, if you're in a fantasy league, you get a chance to pick this guy up. This is an ace in the making. Um, he just strikes out. He's like almost like a right hand or left handed Spencer Strider, but just with more human legs. Really, really good. I'm also a big fan of Colt Keith, who the Tigers have just handed the second base job to this year. So I, I feel like the Tigers are on the rise. All they're really waiting for now is for that bias contract to get off the books so they can invest in some players who actually know how to play baseball. They to but they, yeah, I'm sorry. But yeah, the Tigers are definitely a team on the rise. I wouldn't be surprised if they made, made, made some uh, noise in the AL Central. Yeah. I know who I'm investing in from the Tigers. Javier Baez. Uh, it's you had to say it too. That, is, tough, that is to our subject tie. Best tagger in the it. league. You want to oh, say El Mago? Yeah, let's. Yeah. At least you have Chris Bryant walking around all sad, feeling bad for himself and bashing the organization to the athletic, just being uh, all sad. That we're finally free from Miggy's contract and lackluster last few years. And now you got to get, you got to keep yeah. going forward. I also so, feel like on the Twins, uh, Correa played almost the entire last season with really bad plantar fasciitis, which. Yeah. I have also dealt with, and it's horrible. And he put up not great numbers, but they were decent. And he's, from what I've seen, he's back to, he feels 100%. So he could be a sneaky late round uh, fantasy pick. And his career war numbers are pretty good. If he, if he can give us a real five, six more season this year, he maybe get back on a kind of a potential Hall of Fame track. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I like, I like where it's a sneaky play. He's basically free right yeah. now. Yes. There was a red Bowman Chrome auto that was going. I was watching it. I'm like, oh, I wonder if I can steal this thing. And I wasn't close to winning, but. At this point, like I thought I maybe could because he's a guy that's completely forgotten. Like we think Lindor has been forgotten, like Correa completely forgotten. Um, he back to back, like pretty blah years. And this is technically his prime. Defense is still good. He could he could sneak his way into a top three or top five MVP finish. The hard thing about Carlos Correa is what's regression that's permanent and what was just plantar fasciitis, right? This last year, he still had 1.4 B war and had a 94 OPS plus for a shortstop. That's really not horrible. Obviously, he's paid quite a bit, but it's not like he had a negative defense, like negative war season. Two years ago, 5.5 war, age 27. He's entering his age 29 season 
with 40 war. And this is the type of conversation that people who don't quite align to our views on war are really not relating to our conversation. And I get that. But he still is a shortstop who has 173 home runs through his age 28 season. He'll have at least 220 probably by the time he's 30. Eh, yeah, that's two years from now. So yeah, that could happen. I'm just saying like, there is a lot to like with Correa. 820 OPS for his career. It's pretty good. Platinum glove winner, gold glove winner. World a, lot of a lot of big postseason moments too. And pretty good. Of, you pumped Lindor. Now you're going to pump Correa. We know where you're buying. <laughs> yeah. You know, hey, I, yeah. I have zero Correa cards. So I'll be honest with that. But it's there's definitely a benefit of starting young like Correa did. Yes. Unlike this guy from the Royals, Cole Reagans. You want to talk about pitcher fantasy sleeper or at this point breakout candidate because he's probably mm -hmm. going pretty early probably in the top 100 or 150 or so uh last year 3470 era 113 strikeouts and in 96 innings and he made i think a change in the middle of the season yeah yeah you got i think he got traded to the royals and then they right. did yeah. something he was traded right. for chapman oh the oldest yeah, chapman the oldest. okay uh, i've if never heard of him, guy, but... i'm gonna be honest yeah, Phil, that's, a great name. that's a great name, fantasy baseball players out there. If he's still around outside the top 100, you got to yeah, grab that. Guy. Take him in fantasy and the hobby is probably overpriced. I haven't checked, but I'm, I guarantee you he's probably overpriced. He's 26 years old right now. Who's cracking? I goosed us. I think, oh, we, should move, conversation? I think okay. we should move on to, to the AL East. All right, Phil. Is that who Phil has? Yep. All right, Phil. All right, AL East. We've got with the Red Sox, Tristan Casas, who had an amazing second half last year. We're looking at 15 home runs and 211 plate appearances, and he did not hit lefties too well, but his OPS against them was still above 800. That's awesome. Uh, Yankees, Glaber Torres. Um, thinking about taking Anthony Volpe here, but I pulled up Glaber first. He had a pretty good season last year, guys. 25 home runs, 13 steals, and a 10% walk rate. And he's going into a – this is going to be a contract year for him. Uh, with the Jays, for me, it was between Ricky Tiedemann and Bo Bichette. A lot of people have forgotten about Bo Bichette. Bo Bichette, uh, ugh. His sprint speed is now below 50 percentile, and that was reflected in the numbers with the role changes. Didn't even steal 10 bags, and maybe he was injured. I don't know what happened there, but he had a, a, a career-worst uh, – uh, launch angle as well. Ricky Tiedemann's another guy I was looking at who did not pitch more than five innings in any games last year, but he's a stud and he was like a top three pitching prospect heading into the uh, 2023 season. And this year he has a chance to break into the rotation on opening day as the number five. And the Orioles, I'm going to go with Colton Kowser, who's absolutely tearing it up this spring. And if you look at the last couple of years, he's at ISOs above 200 in AAA and AA. Sucked in the majors last year with his foray, but that could all change this year. Maybe he's going to split time with Cedric Mullins. We'll see. Great. Good job. Nice. So a lot of names are thrown out. Glaber Torres is interesting. I actually, I'm actually thinking Anthony Volpe. He looks really good this spring. His swing looks better. He's hitting balls that he was unable to hit last year. It's spring training, so it doesn't really always translate. But Volpe is someone who is good defensively. He's a shortstop. He's going to have a position big leagues for a long time. He's a Yankee. I do like him. I do like Volpe. But at the same time, he was a 666 OPS guy last year. Does anyone have concerns? Does everybody like Volpe? Like, what are your takes on him? His cards are expensive. I'm we talked about this guy. before. Like, would he be this expensive and sought after if he wasn't on the Yankees? It reminds no. me a little bit of Mac Jones with like the comparisons to Tom Brady. Well, he has the intangibles. So, like, Fulpy's going to have the same intangibles yeah. as Derek Jeter, and or he does. He's got the makeup and the brain, and he's a good guy. So, he's going to be like the same player, and he's going to really outperform all of his expectations. How did that work with Mac Jones, right? The guy that spent $100,000 or $160,000 for his one of one, how did that work out? I think Volpe could still be fine, and I think he will have some positive regression this year. I just don't – I don't see a breakout yet. I think too much would be required for that to happen. I think uh, – I mean, 28% strikeout rate, 9% walk rate, 209 average last year, 283, 383 slash. He's got a lot of work to do, and I think he – I think he's great against fastballs, but he can't hit anything else, if I'm okay, not so mistaken. With F4, F4 does not like Volpe as much as B War. Um, where do you think he ranks in baseball? What shortstop is he first, third, fourth, eighth, thirtieth? 
Where is he ranked in F4 last year? Do you guys know? Let's. What's your guesses? I mean, 14th. He, yeah, he graded out well on defense, right? So probably, yeah, I would say like 15, 16, something like that. Okay. 15, 15th oh. with 1.9 F4. So I'm just saying like that he has a lot of people ahead of him, even like Willie Adamas and Jeremy Pena, Orlando Arcia. Orlando Arcia was good. I'm not trying to bash, but I'm just saying like you got to be significantly better than Orlando Arcia to have hobby staying power is my point. So. Agreed. I, so there's a name I just want to briefly bring up, not a young guy, but there's a dude on Baltimore who I think has a lot of pressure. He needs a big season almost as much as anyone else does. And that is Craig Kimbrell, who was brought in to replace Felix Bautista for a year. Coming off not a great season in Philadelphia. A lot of Phillies fans blamed him for losing that NLCS. And he, he did have a few losses in the NLCS. He sure did, and they were ugly, ugly losses too. But, I mean, he's going to be anchoring the bullpen of one of the best, like, young up-and-coming teams. And if he starts blowing saves in April, it's it's going to get really ugly or has the potential to get super ugly. I Craig like him. Kimbrell. I hope he's got another big season left in him. I like, the, uh, I like the Cassis pick. Uh, Phil, a lot. I think people kind of missed that how good he was after the All-Star break last year. I pulled it up. He had 15 home runs in 54 games. He had a 1.034 OPS. He hit 317. Um, he was fantastic, and that's what people were hoping from last season. It's just that the Red Sox obviously weren't competing, so I think it kind of went unnoticed. But he's a guy that I'm I'm pretty excited to see how he can do this year from a fantasy and card perspective. Um, and then, I mean... I pretty much just looking at the entire Orioles team and wondering like how many of those guys are really going to show up this year. They obviously had a fantastic season last year that sadly for many of their fans fell short, but um, they've just got so much talent up and down. It's, it's kind of exciting to see that roster unfolding. So yeah, for sure. With and just, I missed a Ray uh, Shane Baz. I just don't want to name two pitchers. I've already talked about enough pitchers. Yeah. So 24 years old, didn't pitch at all last year. I know he's already injured again this year and there's a setback, but yeah, him. So Tristan Casas, you talked about him actually having okay numbers against lefties. He had an 817 OPS with a 215 batting average. He only had 97 plate appearances against lefties. Is that because you don't face that? He had 405 against right-handed pitchers. Did they platoon him pretty good? Probably, as they had Justin Turner, right? So I'm guessing Turner. they protected him against a lot of lefties last year. Yeah, because there's a he, there's a real world where he takes that step and his numbers yeah. look really good. Like his uh, home run totals can approach mid thirties pretty easily. So yeah, some of this right. is also possibly cherry picking samples. So like you can't not use his first half. What if he starts out slow again? What if he struggles more against lefties? What if, I mean, a lot of people assume he's going to hit close to 300 because he's got a high walk rate and he strikes out only 25% of the time, which for like a first baseman, it's not too much, I guess that hits for power. But in that stadium, it, it, if he, tries to pull all these home runs it's going to be tough for him so he's going to continue and he does spray the ball out pretty well so awesome okay West, here we go rangers easy white langford he has such a high ceiling that it's unreal and on top of that they're going to be really good there's not much pressure on him to perform necessarily i think he will be with the big leagues quick i don't know if he'll break camp but i think he should white langford easy pick there for the rangers mariners this is not going to be a very exciting pick but i think julio rodriguez and the reason, the reason i say julio rodriguez is because he's still like people are still doubting him a little bit. I do think there's some room in his cards because he could get to the Acuna Soto tier in value if he has a big season. It starts off with a decent first half. So I like Julio. Angels, Zach Neto. I could have said Logan Ohapi. I really like him. But I think Zach Neto, if he takes a step offensively, his defense is killer. He is so good defensively. And on top of that, he has a lot of offensive potential. We saw that in spring training so far. And he kind of was starting to find it in the last year, if I'm not mistaken. So I like Neto a lot. Plus, he'll be in the Angels lineup with not very much pressure. The Astros, and this is related to card values. I'm saying Jose Altuve. I think Altuve is slept on in the hobby because of the cheating scandal. People that realize how good his acumen is, he might not have the best advanced analytics necessarily. He does, but it's not like their 70 war player. But he's close to being like a definitive Hall of Famer, in my opinion. So there's value there. And Zach Geloff is the last one for the Oakland Athletics. Not many players to pick from the Athletics. He is the easy, obvious one, which I know probably isn't very exciting. But I do think he has a ton of potential, and he's a great player. And his cards are going to have very plentiful this year, which was a lot of fun for collectors. So those oh, are my five for the AOS. Eight. You did it. Same. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Right. So what do you guys think of the AL West? I agree with J-Rod. I think he's most likely of all players in baseball to make the Acuna leap. Yes. He's going to have to do a lot to get there, and maybe it won't be in the same shape. 
maybe he won't have a 950 OPS, but the combination of power, speed, defense, batting average, the it factor, hits the ball hard, hits it to all fields. It could be his year. He's still young. Yeah. Uh, I liked what I saw last year from Josh Young. Uh, he's exciting too. I think he's a guy to kind of keep an eye on. I mean, obviously the Rangers are another team with young talent in addition to some very ta talented veterans, but um, Wyatt Langford's obviously the sexy choice there. One um, thing about Young, I didn't pick him because he's hurt. And the exact article I looked at prior to this was Texas Rangers will slow play Josh Young's calf strain recovery, which yeah, is never a good that, sign. Yeah. So that's I why that. I, I do like him, but he's had a lot of issues. Even in the minor leagues, he had injuries. Yeah. He's old, too. Yeah, he's older he's than like anything. 26? 26, 27? Yeah. Yeah, 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 he's he's older. Older. yeah, this is a bit of a flatter division in terms of some of the some of the names on the different teams. I, I don't know. I guess I generally agree with the others that you picked. I mean, obviously, I want to see Jordan play a full season, too, um, and just go out there and mash. Like, he's just terrifying. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that pick was my least adventurous um, or my least brave because you could have said like Hunter Brown's going to bounce back, Framber's going to do great, all these different things, but I didn't because yeah, Jordan is definitely the guy I most want to see who hasn't yeah. really given us 150 plus games yet. He's the guy we all really. most want to see it. You could yeah. have stupid numbers this year. Yeah, I did. A lot I of did. people I know are very high on Logan Ohapi from a fantasy oh. perspective and just in general. Um, he had. Uh, a, a poor second half of the season last year um, after starting out kind of hot too. So, well, he had, he like destroyed his shoulder. He had to have yeah. surgery and he came back. Of course he might not be quite the same, but before he got hurt, he was making that angels lineup with O'Trout and Otani all healthy. They look so good. I thought they were for yeah. sure making the playoffs, but then he tore. What is, is I don't know. He did the same thing. Yeah. Tatis did. It like popped out and then it really ripped. Yeah. So. Yeah. I know something about that. Doesn't feel good. Okay, any fun that, before we move on, I did see a story that that the, the Astros wanted to – they were toying with hitting Jordan second. I, I have not looked at spring to see how that's going. That seems like – Why? They, I think they want to get Kyle Tucker up sooner. So they have those two lefties. They're always trying to split them up. But oh, I, would, oh. I would be more inclined to put Tucker two and Jordan Yeah, four. Tucker is a great two hitter. He's actually yeah. good on the base paths too. Why wouldn't you put Tucker there? I don't know. I would want Jordan up as much as possible. I would just bat him back to back. I mean – it's not like that makes it easy for lefty relievers to come in and deal with those two guys. I, yeah, I yeah. Mm -hmm. I yeah okay. they're they're good enough against left left-handed pitching. Yeah, ask speaking of which, oh. I got a Geloff Black. I ended up nice. that one. I guess a oh. wise decision. He's had a good spring. Nice. Yeah. <sighs> the yeah, thing he's got to overcome is the fact he's not. He's like a nomad, moving from ballpark to ballpark, place to place. How will that impact players mentally? Does it impact players mentally? I don't know, getting booed by fans, no attendance. There's a lot of things that I kind of wonder about those ace players, how they're going to be over. Like, it has to be a different feeling than playing for the Yankees, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Well, they're going to move to Vegas. I'd say they all bet on themselves. Hey. Good one, Ty. Can't sneak any by us this time. I how many kids do you have, Ty? That was a dad joke. Yep, I've got four. So they're all, I got those, you know, they just flow. The jokes just flow. All right, uh, let's shift gears over to the NL, shall we? I want to start right. with the uh, NL East. Chris, you want to throw Ooh. us some picks? Ooh, okay. All right, I'll save the best for last. All right, so let's start with the Mets. I think uh, Francisco Alvarez, like the power is extremely real. He's already launched a couple impressive home runs in the spring. He's extremely young. He's 22 years old. Um, I think he's a, good, he's a good pitch framer, but definitely the future power hitter of the Mets organization looks uh, very for real. For the Phillies, Andrew Painter is, I think, still their top prospect, but he's not supposed to pitch this whole season, which is too bad. But a guy in the Phillies that interests me is Trey Turner, who signed there and had all this preseason hype last year, and his cards kind of went up. And then for the first, like, four months, he did nothing. So his cards came back down. So I feel like he is the definition of a post-type sleeper right now. Maybe he's more comfortable in Philly. Who knows? Um, for the Marlins, obviously, Yuri Perez is the person everyone wants to see. He had a cracked fingernail, but he seems to be okay. Um Jazz Chisholm, um, the NL's Byron Buxton. How many games are we going to get? And uh, Max Myers, their former number one uh, overall pick who just recovered from Tommy John surgery. Keep your eye on him in your fantasy leagues. Late round sleeper. For the Nationals, C.J. Abrams had a very quiet 1847 season last year. Um, he will absolutely be, uh, be let loose on the base paths. Could be a, a really nice kind of mid-round fantasy player. 
And James Woods, the power, James Wood, the power is extremely real. I hope you guys have seen the absolute nukes he is dropping in spring training, but uh, yeah. it's pretty impressive. He's All right, great. Let's talk about guys. Time to put up or shut up uh, for Jared Kalanick. I've seen a lot of people say there's no pressure on him. Just bat him ninth and see what he can do. There is pressure on this guy because he basically flopped in Seattle and he's given a total false start. So I'm excited to see what he can do. I think he's going to be great, but there is absolutely a lot of pressure on him, even if he's sitting ninth for the Braves. Yeah. Can I say one thing about Jazz Chisholm? He has a career. 612 OPS against lefties. He is horrible against lefties. That's, That's my beef, Jazz Chisholm. Why I can't. Not a very good OPS. No. And mm-hmm. eight home runs for his career against lefties versus 45 is against righties. Like he just doesn't hit well. He can't do it. That's why it always blows my mind. I, I don't know how many lefties I faced in Little League, but I can't, it's kind of crazy to think that it makes that much difference for a hitter to pick up the ball. But Trey anyway. Turner's an interesting one um, because I thought that was one of the cooler things last year to see that really cutthroat Philly crowd, like actually literally bring that guy back to life. Yeah. Like he was so inside his own head and slumping so badly. And they, they're they so critical typically of their athletes. And somehow it was just like, come on, man, like we need you. And then the whole season started to turn for that whole team. I mean, it was like hinged on him. So that was cool. I mean, we've talked about him before in the sense that I I think his cards got too crazy last year and long term they don't have a ton of staying power, but he's he's incredibly exciting to watch. Just smooth, Mr. Smooth. I want to see him get 60 stolen bases. He had 30 last year, which for last year is not that many. So I'd love to see that. Base. <laughs> he really could if maybe Schwarber wasn't leading off and blocking the base paths. So Yeah. Yeah, and I know I know we had talked about Trey in another episode and um his his chase rate in, in some of the things areas where he's regressed um aren't really a great sign for the rest of his 30s but a lot of that also was not factoring in the the turnaround the last couple months his chase rate got better and all those underlying stats got better so baseball savant page when compared to previous years is going to look pretty bad um and ominous but i i'm betting on him showing us a different version of himself this year that's more like august not exactly like august because that would be impossible uh in september but less like the first four months with nick cassianos we saw the adjustment being quite difficult for him too first year in philly what do you guys think of uh bryson stop any thoughts on him he's not much i like him better than alec bohm bohm does nothing for me bohm does nothing yeah stott uh not a ton of power uh, by any means, he only had 15 home runs in 151 games, but 30 stolen bases, 31 stolen bases. He had a 4.3 WAR last year. I don't know. I don't think I don't know how much upside he has, but I know I hear a lot of Phillies fans love him. He was a first round after. So pretty cool stat about Trey Turner. His sprint speed has been identical since 2016 at 30.3 feet per second, which is really fast. Number one in baseball. Him is basically tied at the Ellie De La Cruz. But my wow. thing is he has not slowed down, even though he's entering his 30s, which is good. Because if he does slow down, what's he regressing to? You know, 100th percentile to 85th. That's still really yeah. good. So Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. So what division's next? Uh, I'll take the NL Central. Uh, let's start with the Brewers. Jeff's not here, but I know he's excited about Jackson Churio. Obviously a hot name. But I'm going to go Sale Freelick, too. Um, and I think, you know, he was a, the first-round pick back in 2021. Uh, wasn't great last year, but showed some flashes. So I think I'm sure Jeff will be watching with anticipation to see what he does this season for the Cubs. I'm going to go Pete Crow Armstrong, um, first rounder for the Cubs in 2020. He played well in the minors with 20 home runs and an 876 OPS in 107 games, uh, played a few games last year in the majors and, um, didn't do too much for the Reds. Uh, you've got a, obviously a few guys, obviously Ellie. Spencer Steer, Christian Encarnacion Strand, but I'm going to go with a guy you mentioned in the last video we did, uh, Scott, and that's Matt McClain. He had a 3.7 war in 89 games last year, 30-30 potential guy, really pretty solid defense. Um, overall, like you said, he seems like a ball player. Pirates, uh, Jack Swinski was great in fantasy last year. Key Brian Hayes is fantastic defensively, but it's got to be O'Neill Cruz and Henry Davis this year. They're lighting it up in spring training with seven combined home runs. Cruz hit two absolute cruise missile nukes and the Cardinals most would say Jordan Walker. I'm going to go Nolan Gorman who had a 2.4 war in 119 games with 27 home runs last year. 
Great. Good yeah. job. That was way below a minute 30. Nolan nice. Gorman also has like one of the best looking stadium club uh, image variations. Oh, uh, really? Out of the set this year. Just spectacular. He's doing a home run trot. So you can see the scoreboard saying his name and home run in the background. It's a gorgeous horizontal card. So that card alone makes me root for him. I want yes. that card to matter. Yeah. So the Cardinals, probably the worst possible year you could ever have last year. Everything went wrong. Tyler O'Neill got benched. Wilson Contreras, they pulled him from catcher for a few days before the whole world shamed them and they put him back. It was weird. The whole thing was weird. Was but weird, I do yeah. think Nolan Gorman is slept on, and he's hitting in front of Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado. His run, he's going to have tons of pitches to hit, plus he's going to score a ton of runs this year if he can get on base. So I do like that pick. Yeah. McLean is an interesting one um, because, like, the – the production that he had in the minor leagues, I don't think really translated to what we saw in the majors, which he still did a really great job. 507 slugging percentage, 290 average, 357 on base, 16 home runs, 14 steals, and 403 plate appearances. So walk rate was 17% in AAA. K rate was 21%. Then we saw the walk rate drop, basically cut in half to 8%, and the K rate was at 28.5%. So I think his barrel rate was pretty solid, especially considering his position. So th this is a guy that I don't know if we've seen the real version of him, and it could actually be better than what we've already seen. So he's an I, interesting guy for me. Yeah. And All Carlos those... Strand, I really like as well. He was so good with their AAA team. If you look at his stats, he was amazing. He's going to have to fight for playing time, though. All of them are, which hurts. So All Chris, those what do you think? in that ballpark, you just have to get excited about anyone who takes, who plays 80 games in the Great American Ballpark. You got to be excited about that. I, whenever, whenever you guys say Matt McLean, we talked about him last episode. Every time I hear his name, I just hear his his last name in Alan Rickman's voice, like from Die Hard. I just hear McLean <laughs> here, so that makes me like him even more. It's unrelated to anything, but that's when you every time someone says his name, I'm just I'm hearing Alan Rickman's voice, which is a nice reminder because Alan Rickman was great. McLean's uh, stuff has dipped some, um, which is interesting, but he, I mean. Just like kind of low point of cost of entry, like his his uh, Bowman first Sapphire PSA ten is forty six bucks. Isn't he like twenty four? Am I wrong? Uh, that sounds right to me. I can look at yeah twenty four. Yeah. So do we think he has like staying power? Like that's my biggest thing with players like McLean. He might be a fantastic player for the Reds, kind of like Charlie Blackman is for the Rockies. Yeah. But like, does he have the it factor for the hobby? You know, that's what I think with some of these yeah. players. His name's Matt McLean. I mean, probably not. <laughs> the, the defense looks at least average, uh, positive defensive war on fan graphs. I think a lot of it's going to come down to that. A lot of it's going to come down to the the reverse effect you get with your war playing, not at Colorado, but at Cincinnati, which is yeah, pretty definitely. close. Didn't we say that Raphael Devers would have 46 home runs last year if he played all the games in Cincinnati? That's because he peppers it off of the ball, off of True. the green monster, but yes. True. But you've got you've got to put up some, some crazy counting stats yeah. being yeah. a red or else, you know. Encarnacion Strand, he's better. He better put up something really tasty, or else you're not going to get adored in the hobby when your war is zero. Here is his ballpark expected home runs. Cincinnati's literally number one with 19 expected. Yeah, nice. well, that's yeah, it should be. If he played yeah. in San Francisco last year, nine, not good. So. Yeah. Good thing he's not out there. One other name I just wanted to mention, probably more for for fantasy purposes than cards, but Seiya Suzuki had a really kind of sneaky, very solid year for the Cubs. And just seems to be slowly getting better. So if you're looking for a third or fourth outfielder in your fantasy drafts, you could do a lot worse than that guy. It's interesting. Unless, unless he drops the ball against who was at the Phillies to lose their whole he season. Gets but I mean, it, that doesn't Great. affect some fantasy stats. Yeah, it's still it's sad. sad. Um, it doesn't mind. We count errors. <laughs> who's the pitcher for the Cubs they just signed from Japan? Shota Imanaga. People are high on him. Some are, some aren't. Really, I know some, some projection like, systems hey. love him, some don't. Yeah, yeah. So he could be an interesting play too. They, he, I, I think his um, was it him or was it um, was it uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto who had like a like a a zero home run rate? I in don't. Japan. I know. One of, I remember seeing that in a video, but I'll be honest, I yeah. mixed these guys up. I'm not. They're not household names for me yet, so I'm so. But I did so, see that in a video of one of those guys who was coming over. Right, right, right. I, I think with Imanaga, I think he's got really great control. Um, yeah. I don't think he throws super hard, but we've seen that sort of thing translate before. Yeah. So we'll see. his home run per nine is pretty low. Yeah. It was 
This last year, 0.8. So that's pretty good. It's pretty good. But he's also heading into his age 30 season. So take that with yeah. the grain of salt. Okay. So what's the next right. division? NL West. That's you, Scott. <laughs> oh, that's me. Let me pull it up. Okay. I'm going to take a minute and 20 seconds for the Rockies and 10 seconds for everybody else. How does that sound? All right. Well, you're six seconds in. Are you serious? Okay. Uh, Rockies Tovar. I love Ezekiel Tovar. He looks amazing in the spring. He is the youngest player ever for the Rockies at a home run, and he could win a gold glove pretty easily in the NL. Love Tovar. You could say Nolan Jones, and I wouldn't be mad at you, but he's a little bit older, and I think he might regress. Then we have Bobby Miller for the Dodgers. A uh, young pitcher with not very much pressure on him, at least in the regular season. He has a great bullpen, not bullpen, a starting rotation around him, as well as, you know, coming back. We have Otani as well as Clayton Kershaw probably going to return two years from now if he stays healthy. Corbin Carroll is my Diamondbacks pick. You might say that's weak, but I think it's the exact same reason I picked Julio Rodriguez. I think his ceiling is incredibly high, and we haven't seen him be a good defender. If he can defend even at league average, his war is going to be in the eight last year, and so I think that's a great pick. Padres, I said Tatis. I've talked about him too much, so I moved to Jackson Merrill, their top prospect. He's getting reps in the outfield. He has a ton of offensive uh, potential in his ceiling, as well as being on the Padres, getting a ton of playing time. And lastly, the Giants, I mean, it's tough, right? We talked about Logan Webb, but he has hit, been hit with steroids in the past in the minor leagues, which is tough. But I do like Logan Webb the best on their team. But we said Kyle Harrison, even though I don't know a ton about him, people are high in Kyle Harrison, and he could be their next ace. So that's the NL West. I'm really interested in Tyler Glasnow this year. He's starting the season for them. Um, yep. And he looked glass nasty last year, like big time. He was He was filthy. If he can pitch a full season, I haven't. Is he like anywhere on the Cy Young radar for yes uh, Vegas? Because he if somebody be. got a steal, for example, I would have probably bought this card at the time if I had seen it. Uh, but he, his Redding real one uh, rookie sold for seventy nine ninety nine in December, and I think that's just a cool card. I like him. I know a, a guy on, on Instagram who collects him is a big super collector of glass now, but. Um, I think he's just extremely fun to watch. Extremely fun to watch. Yeah, he might be the pitching version of Jordan. Like, if we could just get one, like, 180, 185 inning season out of him, the, the numbers could be almost Spencer Strider-esque. Yeah. yeah. He hasn't topped 120 innings before. And he was a rookie That's in 2016, probably. 2017. So, yeah, there's some pretty serious risk there. Yep. And outside of the one year where he had – actually, there's two years we had over 100 innings, and then his highest was 88 and then 60. Yeah. So he like doesn't, he can't stay healthy. But who knows if the Dodgers made that something magic. Maybe they're making the deal with the devil, how many players they've signed, but it could be his year. Yeah. A lot of good catchers in the league. And I know some were brought up. Uh, one that I would have brought up here was probably Gabriel Moreno. Um, so if you look at the top like pitch framing catchers in the majors, I think it's like Francisco Alvarez, Adley Rushman, maybe Jonah Heim for like at least the young crop. Gabriel Moreno did win the gold glove, though, and that could bode well for when pitch framing doesn't matter, presumably in another year to three years when they switch over to robo umps. So Moreno is a guy that really showed off the, the bat and the power in the playoffs. Um, and if he's able to elevate the ball a little bit more consistently, then we could look we're looking at like 2025 home runs versus what was kind of a mediocre power year. And the average is legit, too, and they're pretty comfortable hitting him in the three spot, I think which isn't saying much because their lineup isn't phenomenal, but it's okay. Can I ask you a question about Gabriel Moreno? I know you like him a lot, Phil. And I actually was debating him, but something that spooked me is Fangraphs is generally used for catchers, right? That's what everybody says. Like use catchers as pitch framing into consideration. Everybody prefers it. Whenever you talk about Buster Posey or Joe Maurer, they always say use Fangraphs. Same with other, pitch, uh, other catchers. According to Baseball Reference, he has four point three war last year according to fan graphs he had 1.7 war it did not like his defense as much mm -hmm. which is concerning uh especially because i think they had seven home runs which is concerning yeah. but that's my thing with gabriel moreno is who is he really defensively he rated out positively last year defensively but his base running and offense was not good mm -hmm. so he was about league average for a bat but you can't expect much more for a catcher yeah, I, I think there's a lot more to come with the bat. And yeah, the defense, I guess we'll we'll see what that is. I think DRS was very solid. To your point, pitch framing, 
I think he was around average in the league. So I don't know if it's that or something else holding him back in fan graphs with his defensive, maybe throwing out runners. I don't know. I don't know what the, the calculation is for fan graphs versus baseball reference there. But isn't that the issue with all advanced metrics? All right. That's why my dad hates him. Yeah. But what else do we got for the NL West? Uh, say, that- go ahead. Teapot, go ahead. No, go, go ahead, Chris. Go. I'm glad you mentioned uh, uh, Kyle Harrison. Like that, that dude is absolutely nasty if you get a chance to watch him. Um, just a lefty who throws crazy hard. Um, and, you know, young pitching prospects in the San Francisco ballpark. I, I like their chances a lot. That's a good point. But, uh, uh, Phil, you might know the answer. Do we know where Ethan Salas, uh, the Padre catcher, do we know where he's going to start? Are they, is it double A? Like, have they said where they want him to start? Uh, I just had it up. He was just reassigned. So it's there in Google News. But yeah, Salas at this point, you guys want to look that up, 17 years old in nine months. It's and so if you're to look at, so like this past year, it became pretty clear midseason that Jackson Chorio and Jackson Holiday were going to be the number one and two prospects heading into the offseason. I think they might have already been number one and two on most lists. So if you try to look ahead to like, who's going to be the next Jackson Holiday? Well, on a short list, Ethan Salas would be in the running, in my opinion. The problem with him is that his bat is behind the glove and he's a catcher which can be really great as a prospect. But then once you get called up, you sort of get the reverse treatment, even though it does help you with war, um, getting that big positional bump being a catcher. So with Salas, he's one to watch to see if that bat develops because uh, last year he did struggle quite a bit, although it was just in nine games at double A. But he was in double A as literally like a 16-year-old, which is pretty crazy. Or just turning 17 at that point. You can't really... That probably probably just turned 17 at that point. Like high school sophomore. Um, <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It is it's crazy. crazy when you think about it that way. It's a totally insane. So I, I want to show Gabriel Moreno's stat cast real quick, Phil, because elite defensively blocks above average, caught stealing above average, pop time, just framing. But like you mentioned, if uh, they bring in a robo ump, that will basically yeah. go away. Almost yeah. Entirely. And he won the gold glove without the robo ump. So. How many yeah. more is he going to win with the robo up even more? So the rules – so the, what they've done in the minor leagues is basically you can challenge strikes and balls uh, as a catcher and as a hitter. You can't have your dugout challenge. has to be you live in the moment. So basically you have three challenges a game. And so if there's a full count and you know it's a ball, but the umpire calls it a strike, you tap your head, then they review it, and they say if it was a ball or strike. That's what how it's been. I wonder if framing will still be valuable because those borderline calls will still trick the umpire live because it's not going to be every call, every single pitch is called a ball or strike from the robo ump. So it still could be value in framing, right? It still could be there if that's the way they go with it. I see. Anyway, kind of a I'm just looking, at, I'm looking at the red here to make myself feel better and trying to overlook the blue. This Batting is that. average <laughs> chase whiff. I'm trying to figure out how we've gotten to this point without – you mentioning Mookie Betts, but uh, <laughs> or, um, I think there's, I mean, I, I want to see how Yamamoto pitches for the Dodgers. And um, there's that guy named Otani. And I, I have had a block, like a mental block with the injury and everything and just how good he's been that I, for some reason, my mind is set up for disappointment this year with him. Maybe it's just, I'm protecting a protective mechanism because I want him to do so well. Um, but, you know, I dropped it in the, in the, our DMS the other day on Instagram on our group chat that like he's the type of guy it's like, there's a, wor- there's a world there. I say Scott, where he could, I mean, hit 60 home runs. Like he's just so pure, so big, so strong. Um, and with him focusing on that squarely right now, I don't know, maybe I'm going to be wrong. I just have this weird pit in my stomach about it, but I, I hope I'm wrong. I, there's, there is a world where he doesn't perform as good this year. He's coming off of a second Tommy John, essentially. It wasn't yeah. Tommy John, but it was Tommy John. And so his last time he did that, he was not as good offensively. He's yeah. looked great in the spring training, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. He also will have Mookie bets on base in front of him. I'm not like touting Mookie here. I'm saying that's going to help Otani with other counting stats, as well as Freddie Freeman directly behind him which will really help him be protected. He had great protection when Trout was healthy, but when he wasn't healthy, we saw people kind of pitch around him. In the spring, they've been pitching him inside so much uh, so that they've been trying to jam him consistently. So maybe his power is slightly down, but he still has amazing numbers and gets on base at a 450 clip. Who knows? So Yeah. 
I thought they had announced that they were going to go Betts, Freeman, Otani. That's I thought Dave Dave Roberts said that, but then every spring training game I've seen, Otani's hitting two, which seems weird to me. I would I would want Freeman right in front of him. To get the so guys. He, but, he spoke right. about it, and he believes in Freddie's bat to ball skills more than Otani's. He thinks Freddie's a higher batting average guy, so if they can get both those guys on base, it's okay if Freddie hits a single type of a thing. Like because Freddie knows how to produce runs is his rationale. Like he can get the hit when needed. Yeah, or at least make contact. Make contact. Well, Tony's the big strikeout guy. So that's that's what Robert said. Yeah. Hey, uh, we didn't talk about Michael Bush, but that's the Cubs now because he was traded, so we don't need to maybe, or we could. But Bobby Miller, um, I, I second that. Big fan, as, as you know, Scott. Um, yeah. Didn't really have the K rate last year, but there's a chance he tweaks his repertoire a little bit to induce less contact, which is the name of the game these days with the new rules, um, the uh, band shifting and, and whatnot. Yeah, he throws very, very hard. Do we believe in either Lux or Miguel Vargas bouncing back? Lux has looked like he's had the yips pretty bad. Miguel Vargas, he was touted to be good. He was a starting second baseman last year, and then he just disappeared at the minor leagues when Mookie took over. But do we believe in either of those young guys? Because those both they both were highly touted prospects. I think the Dodgers maybe stopped believing in Vargas a little bit because I've looked at proposed like lineups and I'm just like, hmm, where does he fit in with like Teoscar Hernandez? And like, then an injury happened and I'm like, nope, he still won't be part of this lineup and him being right-handed. Um, I guess it makes things even a little bit more difficult, you know, wrong side of the platoon, right? It's right-handed, right? His, his highlight was when he was, uh, and we were talking about this, Chris, right? He was in a uh, spring training last year right. and yes. he was injured and he wasn't allowed to swing and he was taking walks. And people are giving him like praise for it. Like, oh, his on base percentage is awesome. This guy's gonna be really good. It's like literally any of us could do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not that wasn't his eye. He wasn't like judging the pitches. He literally just couldn't swing. He was just standing there and seeing what would happen. There, there's a bat of Zach Grinke facing him that's just hilarious to watch. Because I don't think Grinke realized it. He threw a pitch and then was like, Oh, that's right. And then just like 75 mile an hour fast, like just right down the middle to end the at bat. Um, but yeah, okay, so I like Zach Somebody needs to freaking sign Zach Grinke. 21 strikeouts away from 3,000. I'm losing my mind over here. He says he wants to pitch. I've seen videos of bullpens. Why isn't he signed? Yeah, he wasn't that bad, bad last year. Yeah, he had a five ERA. Big deal. But he's still Zach Grinke and gives you innings. He'll still eat innings. I don't understand it. I just wanted to pitch. Yeah. Not ready to I'm, I'm, I'm happy for Joey Votto to get a he's chance good. in Toronto. I, I hope that that has a positive effect on like Bichette and Guerrero because they could learn from his approach. I'm sure he has a lot of hitting knowledge. Oh, yeah. Him. So, and he just seems like a guy you'd want in your clubhouse. Like yes. he of being a lefty bat off the bench. Like, yeah, I'd be thrilled to have that guy around my young players. If I was, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Motto could be great. He, he's going to be a good manager someday. If he ever yeah. goes that route, he loves baseball enough where I think he will be. Yeah, he certainly can't play every day. Like last year, he was awful. But I mean, like, there's spots where I think he, he could be valuable to a team. Yeah. Okay. Is that everything for this episode, guys? Anybody have anybody else you want to shout out in the prospects? A couple oh, of prospects. Yeah. yeah. Ty asked me to come up with three to five. Yeah. I already yeah. mentioned Dallas, even though Chris did. So two more. Um, so guys that could be coveted and rise up the ranks. And I'm not by any means a big prospect guy. That guy, um, because last name's Walters, let's talk wax, much better resource than me. I heard he's yeah, got he's, like a Patreon, which is actually pretty useful too. Um, one of my friends is is a, is a member. Uh, Jet Williams, Mets mm -hmm. organization, 20 years old, shortstop. Guy has a lot of raw power, none shown in games yet. And he absolutely tore it up last year in double a and single a struggle a little bit in double a actually but crushing it in spring training and he steals a lot of bases and he's expected to be either a, a second baseman or a shortstop and the other guy i'll bring up is gonna be dylan cruz so bowman coming out i think a lot of people expect it to come out next month it usually comes out in april sometimes it gets delayed a little bit so i'm not sure what's going on there exactly but he's going to be the chase in bowman his first bowman auto Will be in that product, and he was in uh, last year's draft, just held out of uh, draft. And everybody was flipping out, saying, like, oh, this sucks. But then Wyatt Langford did Wyatt Langford things, and now the draft product from last year is pretty damn good. This guy looks like his name would be Jet. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. This that, is the antagonist in it. That or Chad. But this guy's this guy's uh this guy looks like a jet. I just want to mention one other name because I feel like we should have talked. I, I don't know what, but like Paul Skeens has been pretty oh. electric 
spring training. It's all, it's definitely it's worth all. a mention. Yeah. Um, you can see, you can watch his at bat. Uh, Jackson Holiday facing him. I think on YouTube you can find that at bat. It's just fun to watch. Guy's dialing up 102. He looks enormous. His girlfriend's smoking hot. I mean, he's got a lot going for him. The thing about skeins that, you know, if we're talking fantasy baseball or mm-hmm. even sports cards, you want pitchers to get called up sooner generally because longer careers, right? More counting stats. Um, with skeins, there's a chance that he might not even get like a September call up because it's the Pirates and they're going to slow roll him. Like, then be probably really careful about preserving their, their asset. But yeah, I, I like Skeens for the long term for sure. I would like to see them just sign him. Like they they locked up, uh, you know, Brian Reynolds. Maybe they'll just lock up Skeens, and then they could bring him up. And my not issue. Up. My they issue. do that with pitchers though. Like those, like <laughs> like the contracts that like Eloy got, and That's I could have. in the cards. Did it with Ryder, but not every team could pull that off. That's my that's my issue with buying any pitchers' cards right now. It's just. Yeah. The longer it's I'm tough. collecting cards, the harder it gets. So yeah, yeah. And then you buy one, right. and then you get injured. Hashtag Garrett Cole, right, Chris? Yeah, Sorry, Chris. yeah. yeah. Uh, it's okay. Hey, hey, it happens, you know. All righty, well, it's a great place to end. Thanks for watching. Please listen in the comments down below who we missed, who on your team you're excited about, and we'll see you in the next video.